My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if you notice, the past weeks were about the parable of the kingdom. And we have to note that there were many parables narrated by Jesus to the disciples, to the people, because the kingdom of God has no single description to understand it. And therefore, in narrating different narratives about the kingdom, we will have a felt understanding of some of the descriptions of the kingdom. Today, we are told with this another parable about the kingdom. The king inviting people to attend the wedding feast of his son. And our first reading from the book of Isaiah tells us what happens to a wedding feast. And we are told that there is so much food and so much wine. Choice wine that signifies how important that event is. And the presence of abundance of food and wine symbolizes the spirit of joy that is experienced by those who attend the wedding feast. And therefore, Jesus is teaching us that when we are with the Lord in his kingdom, we all live in joy. To be with God is a life of joy. Christianity is a religion of joy. That is why Pope Francis reminds us that our faces should not be of someone who attends a funeral, but someone who attends a wedding banquet. But this joy is not freed from sorrows, from difficulties, from trials. Christian joy is not boisterous laughters. Christian joy is something that comes from God. That even according to Paul in our second reading, to his, in his letter to the Philippians, he said, Whether I live in abundance or in want or in need, I will be living the spirit of joy. Why? Because God is with me. Therefore, the secret of joy is not abundance. The secret of joy is the presence of the Lord. And to be in the kingdom of God is to live in the presence of the Lord. Second, the wedding feast connotes or implies the presence of a community. A community. The love of two persons draws people and forms a community. To be in the kingdom is to live within the community of God. To be part of the kingdom of God is not to live in isolation. We are all individual persons, but we live in a context of, of a community. The fullness of our lives can only be concretized and realized in the context. We say sorrow becomes bearable when it is shared with others. Sorrow is lessened is minimized when we have a community. Joy is multiplied when we share it to the community. To be with the kingdom in the kingdom of God is to experience joy and to experience it in the context of community. You know, if you notice, we hear a number of cases of suicide. Suicide is an experience of being alone.
people who took their lives are people who experienced being alone. They are in a difficult moment, but they cannot turn to someone they can trust. That's why they end their lives. The antidote to suicide cases is to create and strengthen our sense of community. If I am to describe this attendance, the churchgoers in this 8.30 online Mass, it is attended by couples, by parents, with their children. You are sitting with your community, with your family, and they are your cross and your glory. And it is from these people that we experience real joy and meaning of community. The third one is the wedding implies commitment, implies a definitive commitment. When there is a wedding, we are attending, we are present to witness two persons who will commit their lives to one another and to the coming family that God will provide them, to the children that God will bless them. And the commitment is not just, it's not contractual, it is a commitment for life, that they are able to commit themselves for life, for better or for worse. Whatever happens, to be in the kingdom is to commit myself to God, whatever happens. I will not attend Mass because God is so good to me. I will attend Mass even if the things I am asking from God is not given to me at this time. Because that is what commitment is all about. Whatever happens, I will continue to worship you, my God. And if I can do this to you, I can also do this to all my human commitments in my life. In the parable, the king invited everyone. Why? Because the first groups he invited turned it down, refused to come. And they refused to come. Why? It is not because of immoral reasons, bad reasons. They were good reasons. I cannot attend the wedding because of my business, of my farm. I have to go to my farm. These are good things. But good things detached from God will not lead us to the kingdom. Sometimes the good can be an enemy of the better. The better can be an enemy of the best. In our Christian life and in the context of grace, the good should lead us to the better. The better should lead us to the best. And because these people refused the king, the king opened the invitations to all. Good and bad alike. And our presence here is a testament how God is so open to all of us. I don't think someone can claim here that I am very holy. That is why I come here because I am already perfect. No, we come here not because we are perfect and we are holy. We come here because we are in need of God's mercy, in need of God's love. But when God invited everyone and the hall was filled with guests and people, He spotted someone who was not wearing that wedding garment. And He asked the servants to throw him away. Why? Because he was not wearing that wedding garment. Clothing is a common New Testament metaphor for spiritual change. And therefore, 
when the king invites us to his banquet, he expects us to wear the proper garment. That is why we have that sense what is proper when we attend the banquet of the Lord. We know what is proper and the invitation suggests or implies that when God invites us to be part of His kingdom, it should gradually change our lives. Dili ba kung imbitahon ka mo nga magninong o magninang sa kasal? Makapausab ka na kanato. For instance, about time, it will rearrange our schedule. For us to be free to attend the wedding, we have to devote time for that. At times, we have to travel from a far away place just to attend the wedding of a person so close to us. Sometimes we come from different countries. Second, to be able to wear the proper garment. Kanang isulti ka na to, no nga. Ang atong sulubon, kini ang color, kini ang style. Dili ba, mga ninang, months before the wedding, para giyod, masulob ni mo ang sukod nga imong gusto, nga sexy ka, ayaw ka, nga magmarcha. Di ba, mag-diet ka, na ay daghan ni mo buhaton, no? Kung di na giyod madalap, unsa nga mga belts ang imong sulubon, para giyod mo hiyak ang tiyan, This implies that when we say yes to the invitation, we also accept that it will change us. And that is the very idea of the banquet that the King has offered to us, His people. The Eucharist, the Mass, is like a banquet. It's a banquet, it's a banquet itself. And we, he, when He invites us, He wants us to wear the proper garment. Not just external garment. That is important. We wear decent garments for the liturgical celebration. But what is more important is the interior garment. And according to Paul, we have to put on the Lord Jesus Christ as our garment. His values, His virtues. Putting on humility and meekness. That is why at the beginning of the Mass, we say to prepare ourselves to be worthy. We know we are not worthy, but to be worthy, let us try to recall the sins that we have done. To put on the garment of humility, the garment of meekness, so that we will receive the mercy of God. We will be clothed with the mercy of God with the compassion of God. And by receiving the mercy of God, we are also invited that we will be merciful and forgiving to others. That is why part of the Mass is, let us now offer the sign of peace. We turn to each other. We show the sign of peace. Having received God's mercy, We also share this mercy to our neighbors, to our brothers and sisters. Putting on Christ's Spirit so as to be able to imitate the self-sacrificing and self-giving love of Jesus. The invitation of Jesus, of God, to be part of His kingdom does not just happen every Sunday, but every moment of our lives. Every moment of our lives, God is inviting us. As you listen to this homily, as you listen to the Word of God proclaimed, as you listen to the choir singing, as you listen to our responses, you can feel the stirrings of your heart of the invitations of Jesus. As you face problems in your lives, as we face trials in our lives, as we commit sins in our lives, as we do many good things in our lives and for others, we are responding to the invitations of God every moment of our lives. Let us try to be open and to heighten our sensitivity of the invitations of God in our lives. 
Last night, I went to the hospital to visit two persons. And I feel so consoled because despite of the fractures that they have in their bodies because of the vehicular accident, I can still see joy in their faces. When we visit patients, we are not only bringing joy to them. A patient who has discovered the presence of God, even in the midst of suffering, can also communicate the joy to the visitors. Everywhere we go, every moment, can be an experience of joy if we always sense the presence of God in our lives, always inviting us every moment, every day, and so, if there is an invitation to do something good at that very particular moment, do not wait for tomorrow because tomorrow starts today. And nothing good can happen tomorrow if we will not do anything today. Amen.